This short presentation is to share with you the problems that exist with multi-cyclones. So let me start with a schematic of a multi-cyclone. Firstly, the word multi means many and cyclone is a cyclone. So a multi-cyclone is a body or a housing with many individual cyclones inside it. The reason we don't use an individual cyclone is because grouping many cyclones together in a multi-cyclone is actually more efficient. And I'm going to explain it as follows. Imagine that you are driving your car around a turning circle. If the turning circle is very large and you are doing 40 kilometers per hour, you might experience some centrifugal force. So as you drive around the turning circle, you might feel the force throwing your body to the side of your vehicle. Now imagine that the turning circle is smaller, but you're still traveling at the same speed of 40 kilometers per hour. What you will find is that you'll experience greater centrifugal force. And the smaller and smaller and smaller the circle, the greater the centrifugal force. So what we learn from that is that if a cyclone can be made smaller, we can increase the centrifugal forces inside of that cyclone. More centrifugal force means better separation of the particles. And for that reason, we have multi-cyclones. Rather than treating all of the flue gas coming off the back end of, for example, a boiler in one large cyclone, what we'll do is distribute that gas in parallel through many smaller individual cyclones and in so doing subject the flue gas to stronger centrifugal forces which will cause the particles to separate better from the gas. There's something else I want you to note. If we go back to my analogy of driving around a turning circle, the other way to increase the centrifugal force if we don't change the size of the turning circle is to drive faster. In other words, the faster we drive around a given turning circle, the more centrifugal force we will experience. So let's bring that back to cyclones. If we put more air through a cyclone, the velocity inside the cyclone increases and the centrifugal force increases. So the way to improve the performance of a cyclone is either to take a cyclone and make it a multi-cyclone by distributing the gas through many smaller cyclones, or to increase um, the velocity inside the cyclone by putting more gas through. That's an important principle to note. So what we see over here is a schematic of an individual cyclone and then many cyclones housed inside a square body. Multi-cyclones that have a square body, like we see here, are typically older generation multi-cyclones manufactured before 1994. After that, multi-cyclones were housed in a circular body, as we see in this photograph over here. That photograph is a multi-cyclone, and inside there will probably be about 25 individual cyclones. Now, what I want you to note while we look at this photograph is that the air enters, <clears throat> enters from the boiler house, which is shown in blue on the uh, left-hand side, and it enters midway in the body of the multi-cyclone and the clean air exits from the clean air plenum at the top of the multi-cyclone and we'll see why in the next video. The other thing I want you to note while we are looking at this multi-cyclone is that the particulate matter exits at the bottom into a trolley. You can see the handles of the trolley there and it exits through two flaps and these two flaps are never open at the same time. They discharge one at a time. And the reason for that is so that there is always a seal at the bottom. If we continue to look at this picture, we will see that the clean air that comes out the top goes down the duct, and you can't see it in this photograph, but there's a fan over there called an ID fan, induced draft. Induced means it sucks. So this whole multi-cyclone is under a slightly negative pressure because air is being drawn through the multi-cyclone, and that's why we have to have proper sealing at the bottom where the particulate matter exits because if there weren't two flaps, if there was just one and it opened, air would get sucked in because of the fan, the ID fan that is downstream. That's an important concept. So if you didn't understand it, please go back through this video and just listen to that explanation one more time. Let's take a look at this short video. This video shows the multi-cyclone that we just saw in the previous photograph. Let's jump back to the previous photograph. Remember, the dirty gas enters from the left, exits at a higher level on the right, 
and the particulate matter exits out the bottom. Let's look at the schematic of the video. We, we will see, when I play the video, the dirty gas entering from the left-hand side. We will see the mechanism of cleaning happening through this multi-cyclone just has three cyclones inside of it for demonstration purposes. We will see the particulate matter being caught at the bottom and we will see the clean gas going out the top. Let's take a look. We see the particles and the gas flowing in from the left-hand side. They enter each individual cyclone through spinner veins that cause the gas to spin. The particles are shown on, in brown and you can see that they are flung to the outer walls of each individual cyclone and that they exit out the bottom of each cyclone. They then sit on top of the first flap and exit out the second flap. And those flaps are never open at the same time, so there's always a seal there. Let's watch the video again, but let's look at the gases. They enter, they spiral downwards, and then they spiral back up the center and they exit out of those pipes that are called vortex finders, which is just a fancy name for essentially a pipe. Why does the gas not exit at the bottom of each cyclone? And the answer is that the gas takes up a large volume, and when it reaches the bottom of each cyclone, there's nowhere for it to go. If it were to exit out the holes at the bottom, that bottom chamber would become positively pressurized, and no more gas would be able to enter. And so what happens is the gas gets to the bottom, it's got nowhere to go because the total housing of the multi-cyclone is sealed, and so the gas is forced to change its direction and spiral in a smaller spiral back up the center of, the multi of each cyclone and out the vortex finder and out the clean air plenum onto the ID fan. Please do watch that video again, watch it a number of times and see how separation takes place. The whole purpose of a multi-cyclone is to separate the particulate matter out of the gas stream so that you've got a clean gas stream and you've got the particulate matter. There are five problems that I'm going to discuss in this short video with multi-cyclones. And these are simple problems. The first is the most simple of them all. Most of these multi-cyclones have not been opened up in 20 or 30 years and they are eroded inside. The very nature of, of, that, uh, of the separation process, spinning this particulate matter inside a metal body, means that this metal body, these cyclones, are exposed to very abrasive particulate matter all day that wear down the cyclones. And so as you'll see in this short video, the individual cyclones are often in a very poor condition. This second clip shows um, cyclones that are actually in quite good condition. But as you'll see, most of these clips show cyclones that are in poor condition. Some of these are completely eroded away entirely. And the, that last footage over there shows cyclones that are in very good condition. The second problem with multi-cyclones is that those two flaps that have the seal at the bottom are also subject to the abrasive particulate matter that wears them through. And so this photograph over here shows a hole in one of those sealing flaps. And you can see that it's not a hole that was caused by any mechanical force, like a drill or something like that. It's actually just erosion. You can see it's eroded away, like um, sand dunes almost. As soon as there's a hole in the sealing flap at the bottom, air is going to be sucked in because the ID fan is downstream of the multi-cyclone. If air is being sucked in through the ceiling flap at the bottom, one can't expect the particulate matter to be arrested and to fall into the trolley if there's continually air flowing upwards through those flaps. Let's take a look at a video that shows this problem. We see in this video that the particulate matter is correctly being arrested. It sits on the first flap, it sits on the second flap, and then both flaps remain stuck open because they're broken, perhaps they're jammed. Air gets drawn in and captures all of that particulate matter and takes it out the chimney stack, which we don't want. And in addition, that air that's flowing up through the ceiling flaps disrupts the vortices, the vortexes the, um, in each cyclone, the vortices in each cyclone. And we no longer have that um, centrifugal force causing separation like we need. So what happens is all of the particulate matter that enters the multi-cyclone simply exits in the clean gas stream. And that's a problem. Problem number three is blocked spinner veins. So we know that the gas that flows into each multi-cyclone must pass through spinner veins that start the spiraling motion. What happens if those spinner veins get blocked? 
Well, let's take a look at the first photograph. This photograph shows the individual cyclones that have been lifted with a crane out of the body of the multi-cyclone. Okay, we can see the individual cyclones. Let's take a look at the top. We see on the top the spinner vanes, and if we look very closely at those spinner vanes, we see that on this particular multi-cyclone, those spinner vanes have become blocked with particulate matter. This typically happens when the manufacturer spaces the spinner vanes very close together, which is common in modern multi-cyclones, and therefore these spinner vanes need to be cleaned very often, which is highly inconvenient. How do blocked spinner vanes ruin the mechanism of separation inside a multi-cyclone? Well, this video answers that question. As we see, particulate matter and flue gas enter from the left-hand side. They start spinning through the cyclone on the left-hand side, but on the two cyclones on the right-hand side, the spinner vanes become blocked. There's no flow through them. What happens is that the vortex finders on those two cyclones on the right-hand side serve as a short circuit for gas to exit. Let's watch again. Everything's going well so far, but now the spinner vanes on cyclones two and three are blocking up. Cyclone one is working well until this point in time, where instead of the gas reversing its flow and going back up as clean gas, it exits and short circuits up cyclones two and three, and in so doing, it re-entrains much of the particulate matter. Separation only happens inside a cyclone when the particles are flung to the outside and then the gas can change direction at the bottom and leave the particles behind. But that didn't happen in this case. In this case, the gas exited with the particulate matter and simply re-entrained that particulate matter as we saw. The fourth problem with multi-cyclones is this. Multi-cyclones will treat particulate matter that doesn't break down easily very well. An example of particulate matter that doesn't break down easily is sand. If you go to the beach and you take sand and you rub it between your hands, it won't break down into smaller particles. So if you had a flue gas stream or a gas stream with lots of small particles of sand entrained, a multi-cyclone would work quite well. But ash, downstream of a combustion process, breaks down very easily into smaller particles. Think of it this way. You have a bry, and then you take the ash from your bry and you rub it between your hands. Those particles will break down into smaller and smaller particles. So this is the problem. When you expose particulate matter that's entrained in a flue gas stream to the strong centrifugal forces inside a multi-cyclone, those centrifugal forces will break the particles down into smaller particles. Why is that a problem? Well, firstly, Multi-cyclones struggle to arrest really small particles. Remember, multi-cyclones will only arrest particles down to 5 microns in size. So if you break particles down into a much smaller size than 5 microns, maybe 2.5, 1 micron in size, the multi-cyclone won't fling those particles to the side. Those particles will reverse direction and exit with the flue gas, which is not what you want because you haven't achieved separation. That's the first problem. The second problem is it's these fine particles that are most harmful to human health. We call particles that are smaller than 10 microns in size, PM10, particulate matter, 10, and particles that are smaller than 2.5 microns in size as PM2.5. Now I'm going to put up a slide at the end of this presentation because it's not included in this slideshow that shows the actual size of PM10 and PM2.5 relative to a human hair and you'll see how small these particles are. But this is what I want you to remember. PM10 is dangerous because the particles are so small that they bypass your nose and they sit inside your lungs. PM2.5 is so small that it bypasses your nose and your lungs and enters directly into your bloodstream when you breathe air that contains PM2.5 into your lungs. So it's really dangerous. The problem with multi-cyclones is they create more PM10 and more PM2.5 because they break larger particles down into smaller particles. This slide shows that um, fly ash has a low tensile strength which simply means that it's able to be broken down into smaller particles very easily. And the word that we use to describe this is friability or friability. If particles are very friable, that means they break down very easily into smaller particles. So multi-cyclones are problematic in that regard.
The fifth and last problem with multi-cyclones is that they vary in performance. You don't want varying performance of your abatement equipment. If you install a multi-cyclone to reach a legislated limit of 250 milligrams per normal cubic meter, you want to know that your multi-cyclone is going to consistently perform at 250 milligrams per normal cubic meter. You don't want it to perform at 200 on one day and 450 the next day. And the problem with multi-cyclones is that their performance varies as a function of flue gas flow rate. Remember earlier that I mentioned that the faster you drive around the turning circle, the more centrifugal force you're exposed to. That's why, as we see on this graph over here, multi-cyclones increase in efficiency. They arrest more particulate matter and become more efficient the more flue gas you put through them. The more flue gas you put through the multi-cyclone, the stronger the centrifugal forces inside the cyclone and the better the separation, the better the arrest arresting of particulate matter. That's theoretical. And so as you see on this curve, the efficiency of the multi-cyclone increases as you increase the flue gas flow rate up to point B on the graph. After that, there's just too much flue gas, too much turbulence, and the efficiency begins to decrease as particulate matter becomes re-entrained in the gaseous stream. Bag filters and other technologies are impervious to the flow rate of flue gas through them, and so their performance does not vary, and they're therefore a preferable solution. These are the five problems